Hey, Sean, welcome to an evening post. Thank you for clicking on this. I appreciate that. Tonight, I wanted to talk about how to do nothing. This is a book that was written in 2019 or released in 2019. And it's called How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy. I have to be blunt. This isn't a book review because if you can see from my bookmark, uh, which is a paper towel or a napkin, I have barely made it into this book. I'm in the middle of the second chapter. And yet, even in that first and second chapter, I've been so blown away by some of the concepts in this book because so much of it is what we're used to. And even though it was written or released in 2019, for some reason, the pandemic and all of its pandemicness has only made life busier and crazier. And this past election cycle made many of us check our phones way more often. And we're constantly communicating with people and we're trying to reach out and schedule things and do Zoom meetings and stuff like this. And a lot of even some of the more casual friendship things were like, oh, hey, you want to get together on Friday? Sure. Now becomes like a, hey, Friday, 6, 15 p.m. Like everything becomes scheduled a bit more. And so we're, we're more attentive to our phones and to scheduling and to to lining things up and, and laying out an itinerary and responding to people. And if you're anything like me where you're a freelancer and you're responding to work requests and you're managing multiple projects, if you've got anything going on, plus your family, your friends, and your passion projects and all that, there's a lot that's going on that's demanding our attention more than sort of the quiet, boring pandemic I think a lot of us assumed it would be. And in that, I know that several times I've gotten completely lost. I've gotten completely overwhelmed. Uh, there was a time last summer where I spent two full days, 48 hours, completely away from any device whatsoever. I didn't touch a phone, a computer, a TV. It was technology free. And I thought that was cool, but some of it was done. And a lot of times these things are, are, are phrased as like, you know, do a digital detox. And in that, you'll be able to come back to work with more clarity and, and with more focus. And that's really not the point. And, and, and where I am in the book has struck me so, so profoundly right now that I'm compelled to share my thoughts about it before I've read the rest of the book. But it's talking about how there's so much going on. There's so much news and politics and activism and things that, that do need our attention because that's the way our world works that Walking away from it entirely seems appealing, and that's what many of us do for a day or two. We turn our phone off for a night and feel like that recharges us. But all that is is a band-aid that we tear off the next day and let the wound reopen. And what we need to be doing is working on a way to where we can have a, a balance between an understanding of what peace means to us and, and finding space for ourselves while not completely ignoring or living in, in ignorance of the crazy world that we're a part of because this crazy world needs us. We, we need to participate. We need to be a part of things and being ignorant isn't the solution, but finding a balance between being informed and being involved and being an activist while at the same time taking time for yourself and your family and your art and the things that you do, finding this balance is essential because if not, we're just constantly going to be in this cycle of getting overwhelmed, getting overwhelmed, and then just taking a full break. Getting overwhelmed, getting overwhelmed, and then taking a full break. And that's just not going to be a sustainable way to live your life. And you're going to be constantly running and chasing. And it becomes very important to take some time to breathe, to find some space, and to, to identify what you want that relationship with these things to be. Because cold turkey isn't a realistic solution, but being hyper-involved and always you know, attentive to these things is also not the solution. And so finding what's right for you, finding the right fit, being aware of how much time you're spending in certain places, how much time you're spending on certain websites or on apps or, or even time with certain friends and how that shapes you and stepping back and saying, that's what I have been doing. What do I need to do to find this balance between the world and myself so that I can make both of them good instead of sacrificing both of them? That's all I've got for you tonight. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We've only got a couple more of these videos left before we hit 30, which was the goal, and then we're taking a break for a while. But I want to thank you if you've been someone who's watched a bunch of these. It means a lot to me. But I will see you tomorrow night. 
Mask on, chin up. Goodbye.